Hello and welcome to the Legacy Crusaders YouTube channel. This is Benji and today I wanted to redo my comprehensive Infernoid guide. I'm going to be as specific as I possibly can about everything there is to know about the monsters, rulings, little details that you may or may not have considered uh, if you wanted to pick up this deck. Uh, so firstly, the Infernoid archetype are a collection of fire type fiend monsters. There's one normal summon, singular. We have exactly one normal summon. His name is Infernoid Decatron, fire type fiend with 500 attack and 200 defense. The effect of this card, oh, by the way, is a tuner and it can change its level. So it is a uh, normal summonable monster that can be any level from 1 to 11 by either applying its effect or not. Uh, when this card is summoned, you can activate this effect. Send an Infernoid from your deck to the graveyard other than an Infernoid Decatron. And if you do, increase the level of this monster by the level of the scent monster, change its effect into the effect of the effect monster, and its name into the name of the scent monster. It's not a cost to send the monster. It doesn't go if you summon it. You do have to resolve the effect successfully. Decatron will be getting hand trapped a lot, so quite often he'll just stay on the field as a level one tuner with no real effect. But something important to know is that if he gets, if he successfully resolves his effect, sends a monster to grave, copies its name and its level, and then gets Valored of the effects that it has copied and the level increase it receives, only part of it that would change back to normal is its level, because the level is the only statistic modified by its effect. So if a monster that modifies its own statistics is negated, it's only the statistics return to normal. A Gearsu were negated in the effect to try and become a tuner, and it was already a tuner, it would stay the same. But in this case, it maintains the name and the effect, which means that if it gets negated after it already resolved, it'll become level one, which is good because the Infernoids have a level-related problem that we're going to talk about in a few minutes. But he'll still be able to activate his effects, which means you can trigger him if you want to trigger him. And a lot of the Infernoid effects have costs to tribute a monster you control, so you can still tribute himself. There's a lot of benefits for your opponent uh, Valoring or Imperming uh, the Decatron after it's already resolved. Uh, what are the possible effects that Decatron could take on? Well, that depends on what monster is sent. Uh, by the way, it says, uh, send the monster to the graveyard, and if you do do all these things, where it changes its level, name, and effect, so if for some reason your opponent activates Macrocosmos or summons Dark Law, Scent Monster will go to the Banish Zone. And if it goes to the Banish Zone instead of through the Graveyard, Decatron won't change its name, level, or effect. On to the Infernoids. There are 10 main deck Infernoid monsters. They're leveled 1, one through 10. Levels 1 through 4 we call the Baby Infernoids. They all have a couple of things in common. Firstly, the Baby Infernoids can all be summoned from your hand by banishing one Infernoid from your hand in Graveyard. That means a Infernoid does, can't be itself. You can't just say, I'm going to summon the level 1 by banishing itself. You can't do that. All four of these have a spot removal effect, and they share a quick effect. And the quick effect that they share is that once per turn, you can tribute a monster you control to target a card in your, graveyard, your opponent's graveyard and banish it. It's a quick effect. So if you had multiple copies of these cards, so let's say I had these three on the field and my opponent has one card in the graveyard, I can activate this one, Permaeus, tribute itself, target a card in my opponent's graveyard to banish it. And because these are all quick effects, technically, if I needed to, I can tribute all of them and target the exact same card. So that's an option we have. Sometimes, because you need your opponent to have a card in the graveyard to activate that effect. Tributing themselves is a cost. Sometimes you want to leave them with other cards in their graveyard. So you might uh, have all your monsters target the same card so that there's still more cards in the graveyard. So that's something cool you can do with these guys. Um, they're all soft ones per turn. So if I had multiple copies of the exact same Infernoid, so if I had two of this guy, uh, I could trigger them both. They don't have to tribute themselves. You can tribute uh, a hand trap if you want to set one. You could just set a hand trap. And then on your opponent's turn, activate his effect, tribute this. And you might want to tribute themselves to play around, uh, like Imperm or Valor, but you might want to tribute different monsters to play around Call by the Grave. But that's a shared effect of all the small Infernoids. All Infernoids, all 10 of them, have this in common, that you cannot attempt to summon an Infernoid if the total levels and ranks of effect monsters you control is higher than 8, meaning if you have a level 8 monster, you can attempt to summon them. If you have a level 9 monster, you can attempt to summon them. And there are Infernoids that are above level 8, so there are some restrictions there. Uh, Decatron doesn't have that restriction because it is a normal summon monster. Let's talk about the different uh, single effects that these cards have. Uh, the first Infernoid is Inferno Permaeus. Once per turn, you can target a set card on the field, and then that card gets shuffled into the deck, and the targeted card cannot be activated in response to this card's activation. That should sound similar to the Night Beam. If you target a, like a set back row, your opponent can chain like a different card and then flip the chained card, so they could play around his effect somewhat. Unlike a card like Night Beam, Night Beam says target a set card. That card can't be activated in response. Destroy that target. So if the card gets flipped up, it's no longer considered that target. For me, it just says target it. So if you target a set card and they manage to flip it of like chaining another card than chaining the targeted card, if it were a card that wasn't going to go to the graveyard at the resolution of the chain, it will get shuffled to the deck. So if it was like a floodgate or something, it'll flip face up, resolve, and then get shuffled into the deck afterwards. So it can target monsters. So this card's pretty solid against things like Subterror, Shadals, Frogs, anything that might set a monster face down. 
And because they can't respond with it, often your opponent will just start activating their cards to make sure they don't get shuffled into the deck before they can respond. Hold a solemn strike, they might have to strike the summon versus like the effect might not be able to wait. You can target cards on either side of the field. So if you want to like put a card back in your deck, you can do that. I think I've done it once. It's pretty funny when it happens. Next up is with a zero attack and zero defense. Antra has zero attack and 2,000 defense once per turn. Both of the, all the effects of these small ones are once per turn during your main phase. They're all soft points per turn, so if you summon multiples, you can use them each once. So Antra has the effect to target a face-up card in your opponent's field and return it to their hand. Good for things like Thunder Dragon Colossus, uh, Dingirsu, um, any card that can't be destroyed but can be targeted. You can use it as a out to a floodgate if you need to at the time. Its level is not great for play at the moment, and most cards currently can be destroyed. And another thing to mention about both Antra and Permeus is they can attack the turn they activate their effect. Talk about the level three and level four, they can attack the turn they activate their effect. So um, if you normal summon Decatron, you can copy their effect, activate their effect, remove a card from the field, either return one to the hand or shuffle one in the deck, and then you can still attack with your 500 attack Decatron. Antra can return an opponent's card to the hand. You can't target your own face-up cards. So just so you know, you can't like play a Floodgate and then return it to your hand later. Uh, so next we have Infernoid Harmedic, 1600 attack, level three, zero defense. Once per turn, you can target a monster on the field and destroy it, but it can't attack the turn. It activates that effect. But that means if the activation is negated by something like Appaloosa Bow of the Goddess, he can still attack. So, and then the level four Infernoid is Petrula. Once per turn, you can target a spell or trap card on the field and destroy it. That includes your own cards. Harmedic can target your own monsters. You might want to play a Floodgate and then pop it with Petrula. I do that all the time. That's very common. Petrula 1800 attack points. And that makes a massive difference with why it's so much better than Acker is also usually the kind of thing you want to try and push through before you go into your battle phase. Although the Harmedic is important for having outs for Floodgate monsters in your deck, like uh, Vanity's Fiend or Barrier Statues. So it's important to play both. Next, there are the medium size Infernoids. The, uh, we'll call them the, the teens. The little ones are the babies. These are the teens. Uh, level five, six, seven, and eight. They are similar to the small Infernoids in that you have to banish some Infernoids from your hand or graveyard to summon them. In this case, we will be banishing two Infernoids from the hand or graveyard, and that is collectively. So you can do one from hand, one from grave, two from grave, or two from hand. Obviously, the more free Infernoids you can get into your graveyard, the better it is. They all share the quick effect that the small Infernoids have during your opponent's turn to target a card in their graveyard and banish it by tributing a monster you control. You don't have to tribute themselves. They contribute anything. Um, soft ones per turn, you can do it on their turn. Unlike the small ones, the these Infernoids, the five through eight, they can do it on your turn as well. So it's a quick effect you can just use on both players' turns. So you can just, if you get enough Infernoids in Grave, you can just keep summoning them back and then tributing themselves off or tributing something else off and targeting cards in your opponent's Grave and just keep banishing them. So this deck just banishes everything. All four of these Infernoids happen to have a battle-related effect. Now the battle-related effects are all really good and I want to address them all individually. So firstly, uh, five Piotti. And just because I didn't really mention it earlier, if Decatron were to send Piotti to Grave, it would become level six. So that makes Decatron good for any kind of Synchro or Z because you can make any level. Also, Decatron's a tuner, so you can use it to make Christian Halka Fibrax, which is usually what I do with it. So Piotti is a level five fiend with 2200 attack and zero defense, fire type. If this card inflicts battle damage by attacking a monster, you can make your opponent send one card from the hand to the graveyard. Decent effect if you can't kill your opponent. No one plays this card. Um, it's not bad. It's just its level doesn't really interact well with one of the Void Spell or Trap cards, which we're going to talk about in the next episode of the Comprehensive Guide. So we'll talk about why the level 6, which is a trash card with a way worse effect, sees more play than almost every other Infernoid. When it inflicts damage, take a card from your opponent's hand and send it to the graveyard. It is random, though, so you don't get to pick the card. Uh, next is Sujet, the most commonly played Infernoid after Decatron, because Decatron is the toolbox. So everyone plays a lot of Decatron, but Sujet is played because it goes with a trap card called Void Feast where you try to summon two Decatrons with Sajet, because it summons Infernoids whose total level is eight. So six plus one plus one is eight. Then a Decatron send two Infernoids, and you get five Infernoids. The best effect of Decatron is sending cards from the deck to the graveyard. Sajet is played to maximize Void Feast in order to get the most value out of that. So Sajet's effect is, when you declare an attack with Sajet, you can activate this effect. Your opponent banishes one card from the extra deck. Sounds decent, is garbage. Reason being, they pick the card. Now, every once in a while, your opponent will pick a card that they actually need. If they do that, awesome. Uh, it's very rare that they'll pick a card they actually need. It has happened before. The most common thing you'll use this for is when you activate this effect is when your opponent's playing Pot of Extravagance or Pot of Prosperity and you want to make the third copy in their deck dead. Small outcome you get out of this card sometimes, but the worst possible thing that can happen is you activate this effect, this card gets Ghost Ogred or Cyframe Gear Gamut. I've definitely lost more games activating this effect than winning them, so you don't really want to activate that effect. Still has the tribute uh, DD Crow like effect. He's got 2400 attack, so that's a better attack stat than Piotti to level 5. Usually you can make Decatron into like the level 1 Infernoid Permeus to make it level 2, and then use Sajet and go into like level 8 Synchros like Savage or Cypher Mod Omega, very commonly played in the Infernoid deck. So it's not that bad, but it's not great. 
Next is our first really good Infernoid monster of our beaters that we can just summon from the hand or graveyard over and over again. This is a level 7 Infernoid. This is Infernoid Sights Moss. It has the same tribute effect, uh, 2600 attack, 0 defense. If this card battles a monster, meaning it has to go to damage calculation, at the end of the battle phase, it can banish one card in the field. That you can activate at the end of your battle phase, the same timing you would use evenly matched. If this card manages to battle a monster, go all the way to damage calc and live. So Sight's Moss has problems sometimes being able to attack into monsters. So one of the tricks for that is you can try and make Sight's Moss attack into defense position monsters, or you can play a card that might make it so he will survive a battle, like summon a fiendish rhino warrior. Now fiends can't be destroyed by battle. Or you can activate a safe zone. I think I used to play way back in the day. Make it so he can attack into things and then not die. Alternatively, you can use like something like Forbidden Droplet and reduce your opponent's monster's attack points and then attack over something that you wouldn't normally be able to get over. And then at the end of the battle phase, you can banish a card on the field. Deals with Dragoon. It's a really good card, but it is level 7, so usually people use Void Feast with two Decatrons and Sajet. The secondary copy that they do is like one Sight's Moss and one Decatron. There are better combinations, and we'll talk about that in the next. Cool combo with Sight's Moss because his activation timing is the same as evenly matched. Let's imagine your opponent has a full board, five back row, five monsters, they, they even took both extra monster zones. They have a field spell, so they have every possible card on the field they can have. You can have Sight's Moss attack into one of their monsters, uh, a defense position monster, a monster you can get over. It doesn't really matter. Uh, you proceed to the end of the battle phase and activate Sight's Moss effect, chain link one. Your opponent doesn't do anything. You activate Sight's Moss's second effect, quick effect to tribute a monster you control, tributing itself to target a card in their graveyard. It doesn't matter what card you target. And then because you now control no monsters, you can now activate evenly matched at the end of the battle phase. Your opponent will be forced to banish all cards they control except for one. Assuming this, this is all assuming this resolves. So they'll banish everything except one card. Then the Sight's Moss Chain Link 2 effect the Banish Card and Graveyard will resolve. And then Chain Link 1, it'll ban Sight's Moss's effect the Banish Card in the field will banish the last card. So Sight's Moss plus evenly matches a full board wipe if you can make it through the battle phase, which is pretty cool. Next up, we have Inferno at Atondel. 2800 attack, zero defense. If Atondel destroys a monster by battle and sends it to the graveyard, so this happens at the, at the end of the damage step. You can activate this effect, and because it activates at the end of the damage step, if you kill your opponent's only monster, you can get Cyphering Geared Gamma, and that would be unfortunate. Uh, it does happen sometimes, but he is like the biggest source of damage you can do with the Inferno deck. If he destroys monster by battle, senses the graveyard, you can attack again in a row. So you have to do both attacks consecutively. And that matters. It does affect some of the play lines that we'll see in the third episode where we talk about different kinds of combos, play lines, tech cards, things like that. Important thing to know about Atondel, if Atondel should um, destroy a monster by battle and not send it to the graveyard, you do not have the opportunity to activate his effect to attack again. Cards where that would happen would be like a Pendulum Monster. They go to the extra deck, so it didn't go to the graveyard. Monsters that aren't really monsters, like trap cards, like Conquistador of the Golden Land. Destroys it, goes to the graveyard, it's a trap card, so it's not a monster, you can't activate his effect. Uh, Sight's Moss is also an excellent send for uh, Decatron, because you make Decatron level 8, and then if you have the Infernoids available, you can summon the Sight's Moss back, and then attack with both of them, and then at the end of the battle phase, banish two cards on the field. But when you summon Decatron and make it a Tondale, you make your level 9, and like I mentioned, the level of effect monsters you control has to be under, uh, has to be 8 or lower to summon more Infernoids, so if you use Decatron to send a Tondel, you instantly level lock yourself, so some of the things you can do is if you Decatron to send a Tondel, you can just activate Decatron, tribute a monster itself, and then target a card in your opponent's graveyard to banish it, then you can summon a Tondel. So um, there are ways to play around the level lock by you sending the bigger Infernoids with Decatron. Uh, if you normal summon the Decatron, you can go into Almirage, because the Link Monsters actually have no levels. So one of the best things that's ever happened for Infernoids is that Link Monsters have come out. I want to go back to um, Sajet for a second, because I forgot to mention something. If Sajet declares battle and attacks and makes your opponent banish a card in the extra deck, if a replay occurs, the selection of a new attack target will not trigger his effect a second time. So you can only get one banish off of his initial attack. All right, so moving on to um, the Mommy and Poppy of the uh, Infernoid archetype. This is uh, Deviati and Anoku. This is level 9 Infernoid and a level 10 Infernoid. Unlike the, these, similar to the medium-sized Infernoids, can both be summoned from the hand or the graveyard. Uh, you know, unlike the small ones, which again can only come from the hand, they can be summoned by banishing three Infernoids from your hand or graveyard. And um, they both have board wipe effects and negation effects, so they don't do the DD crowing. Uh, Deviati, uh, when it is summoned, it destroys all spell and trap cards on the field except for void cards. Uh, void cards are the in-archetype Infernoid support cards. We'll talk about them in the next episode of the Comprehensive Guide. So just note that you could have certain Void cards just sit on the field. As long as they're face-up, they won't be destroyed by Deviati when you summon it. Which is funny in the mirror match, because I definitely have played mirror matches where people weren't aware of that, and they couldn't destroy my back row. And I was playing a lot of the Void cards at the time. They're, they're good, 
Some of them are good, and if they're face down, they do get destroyed, so that's important to know also. Uh, the other effect of Deviati is if a monster effect is activated, you can tribute a monster, you can, a quick effect, you can tribute a monster you control and negate the activation if you do banish the card. So if you're under Lancia and you somehow have a Devi Deviati on the field, I don't know how you did that under Lancia, but if you can't currently banish cards, you can't trigger the effect. If you trigger the effect and then they chain Lancia, you still negate the effect, it just won't get banished. Uh, the other thing to know is if the monster got activated, moves itself to another place. If it gets moved from a place other than where it activated, when you resolve Deviati, the monster will not get banished. So if the, if you're negating like an Ash Blossom with Deviati, the Ash will be in the graveyard because it was discarded as cost. The card in the hand can't be banished because it doesn't exist in the hand anymore. So there are a lot of scenarios where that might happen. And there are some plays that you can do to clear your own board. So like, so let's say you have the following two cards on the board. So I just have a bunch of Infernoids here uh, for these videos. So let's say I have Deviati and Sajet. So you might summon Sajet first, which is the level 6 Infernoid. And then, um, because you're currently not level locked, you summon Deviati. You attack your opponent, and then they're playing like Mystic Mind Burn. So if your opponent were to activate Mystic Mind now, because it hasn't resolved yet, I can activate Sajet, tributing itself to banish a card my opponent's graveyard, and then I can negate Sajet with Deviati, because you can negate your own monsters with this, tributing itself. And the Sajet won't get banished because it left the field when it activated on the field. So Deviati is trying to negate a card that doesn't exist. So there are ways to like clear your board, and then we still don't banish the card in Graveyard. So it's something you might want to be able to do, uh, Deviati. Important things to know. If you normal summon Decatron um, and make it Deviati, it'll become level 10, because it increases its level by 9. It won't be able to do the board wipe effect, because the board wipe effect is on summon, and Decatron is a monster that already exists on the field, so it doesn't have Deviati's effect when it is summoned. It gains the effect after the fact. But one of the most common things you do with Decatron is normal summon it, make it Deviati, so you can negate a hand trap, so you can resolve your fusion spell. We'll talk about the fusion monster in the deck in two seconds. We have one more main deck monster, and then the fusion monster. And then we'll be ready for our second video on the void spells and traps. Deviati has 2,900 attack and 2,900 defense. Pretty solid. Uh, Anunku has 3,000 attack and defense, level 10. So if you normal summon Decatron, you can create a spell negate. Oh, I didn't get into that part yet. Uh, Anoku has the opposite effect of Deviati. If a spell trap or effect of a spell or trap card is activated, you can negate the activation and banish it by tributing a monster you control. So all these tributes are costs. And Anunku can negate spells or trap that are placed face up on the field, which is the activation of a spell or trap card. It can also negate the effects of spells or traps. So that includes like a already face up card trying to trigger its effect. So if you were to summon Anoku and there was already a face up at all schism on field, you can then negate the activation of the face up card and banish it or graveyard effects with Anunku, which is really cool. When Anunku is summoned, similar to Deviati, how it destroys all spell and trap cards on the field, Anunku destroys all monsters on the field except itself, which is why it doesn't play so well with the other Infernoids. If you summon like the level 6 and then summon Anunku, you might not want to activate his effect because you'll clear your level 6 Infernoid in the process. So his effect to destroy everything on the board doesn't usually happen unless you're trying to clean up game. Lastly, we have our fusion monster. This is Infernoid Tierra. The fusion material for Infernoid Tierra is one copy of Anunku, one copy of Deviati, and at least one more Infernoid. One plus Infernoids. So you can send all the Infernoids in your deck to the graveyard with something like Future Fusion to fuse all of them. When it is summoned, it has four pieces of an effect. So it has one effect that activates when this card is summoned, depending on the number of Infernoid names used for the fusion summon, will allow you to trigger certain effects. So firstly, I'm going to discuss a minor ruling thing. Most people, like I said, when they resolve Void Feast, our trap card we'll talk about next episode, they summon Sajet and two Decatrons, and the two Decatrons generally copy one Anoku and one Deviati. So that's three Infernoids, including one Anoku and one Deviati, and then they have a Sajet. That is the fusion material for a Tierra. So if you're playing in the Mirror Match and someone does that, you can activate Super Polymerization and fuse all three of those into your own Tierra. But you won't be able to activate Tierra because the required number of monsters of different names to use with Infernoid Tierra's first part of its effect. So on summon, if you use three different Infernoid names, the effect is both players send three cards from extra deck to the graveyard. And there's a lot of excellent cards to send. You can send Elder Entity to test, Cypher and Lord Omega. If you're playing a Shadal engine, you could play El Shadal Epcolone. If you're playing a Frog engine, you can send um, Totally Awesome. You can, if you're playing a Tri Brigade engine, you can send uh, Shurig, the Ominous Omen. A lot of great cards to send. Your opponent gets to send them as well. So this is both players do these things. In the scenario I mentioned with Super Polymerization, the fusion material is checked in the graveyard. And in the graveyard, you use Infernoid uh, Sajet and Infernoid Decatron. You only use two different names. So if you Super Poly uh, the Mirror Match, you can't activate that effect. Just getting that out there right away. It is funny what happens, but you can't actually activate the effect for it. So if you use three different names and your opponent doesn't have an extra deck, you can't legally activate this effect. Second effect of Tierra, which, is the, which requires you to use five names, on summon you would do both 
the, th the three name effect and the five name effect. So both players are going to send three cards from extra to the graveyard. And then if you manage to do five names in the fusion, both players send the top three cards of the deck to the graveyard. Now, even if your opponent doesn't have an extra deck, if you can successfully resolve that effect, you resolve both parts. So you'll both send three cards from the extra deck to the graveyard and then three cards from the top of the deck to the graveyard. I've only seen this happen once. It was a, in a Mech Knight match where my opponent like cleared both of our extra decks and like Omega put cards back in my extra deck and it was possible to do. It was weird. It doesn't usually happen. So as long as one of the effects can resolve, the entire thing can resolve. Now, you might not even want to use the five name effect, which you can avoid doing by using duplicate Infernoids. So like you can use uh, two Deviatis and an Anoku to use two different names, or you can use an Anoku, a Deviati, and like three Decatrons to reach the three names, but not the five names. Reasons you might do this is you might not want to get Ash Blossomed on the Tierra, which is important. Tierra is a level 11 fusion monster with 3400 attack and 3600 defense. I, I know it sounds like we're using a lot of monsters for these fusion materials, but one you can fuse with, fuse with Future Fusion, and we have an in-arc type fusion spell called Void Imagination, which allows you to use six materials from deck. So usually you use six materials. Usually you use six different names, but you get effects for three names, five names, uh, eight names, and ten names. And so if you on summon use six names, most likely you'll, and you choose to activate the effect because it's optional. Every effect of every Inferno monster so far has been optional. So when Tierra activates and we use six names, we resolve the three name effect and then the six name effect in one chain link. If you wanted to use the eight name effect, the eight name effect is both players return three banished cards to the graveyard. Usually when you're resolving this effect, there aren't any banished cards. So it's not usually a big deal. Uh, in order to do that, you either have to fusion using like future fusion or you have to open two of the Inferno names. So if you open two in your hand, the fusion spell lets you fuse from six from deck and cards in your hand. So it is possible to do. And then the last effect is if you use 10 different Infernoid names, which is only possible if you play all the Infernoids except one, because there are 11 main deck Infernoids, Decatron, and then a level one through 10. You can fuse with all 10 names. And if you fuse with all 10 names, you do all four parts of this card's effect in order. So the first effect is you both send three cards from the extra deck to the graveyard. And the top three cards of your deck to the graveyard. Then you return three banished cards to the graveyard. And then the last effect is both players discard their hands. All four of those things would happen. And because you're fusing on your turn, pretty much when you set up to fuse, you can just set your cards and then your opponent will just lose their card. So you either have to use the fusion spell that uses six cards from the, from the deck with four cards in your hand that are all different names. So I think I've done this live like once or twice ever. Or you can play, there is a hand loop Infernoid build where you just go first, set up a play that summons Tierra with 10 different names and then your opponent loses their hand and they have to play with no cards. But with how useful the graveyard is nowadays, that doesn't come up so much. I'm just trying to think of a few other things I might want to mention in the Monsters uh, episode before signing off here. So firstly, all the Infernoids are inherent summons. Usually it's an effect monster with a condition in which it would be summoned. Now all these cards must be special summon. They cannot be normal summon. And because the only way to summon them is their condition, which is banishing some number of Infernoids and then placing them on the field, technically that is not an effect. So if your opponent has Necro Valley on the field, it says that you can't negate the effects of cards in the graveyard that would special summon themselves. So technically like a card like Machina Fortress, even though its effect doesn't activate, it's an inherent summon as well. It's still technically what's called an unclassified effect. So under Necro Valley, you can summon the Infernoids from the graveyard using their summoning condition. The problem with Necro Valley is you'd have to banish the cost to summon them from your hand. So if Deviati's in your graveyard and you have three Infernoids in hand, you can summon Deviati from grave, banishing three Infernoids from your hand. Activate Deviati, destroy all cards on the f all spells and traps in the field, including your opponent's Necro Valley. Um, they don't activate, you can tell because on the card it says this card cannot be uh, normal summoned. You must special summon this card. It says in parentheses on the card, from your hand or graveyard. Whenever you have a card that says uh, from your hand or from your graveyard or from wherever it would be special summoned from, in parentheses, that is a sign that is a non-activated effect. Now, because these can't be normal summoned, technically they're not actually effects either. Hope you guys enjoyed um, learning a bit about Infernoids. I will see you guys in part two when we talk about the void spells and traps.